In this video, we're going to look at enthalpies of formation, which again is another way that you can calculate delta H, or heat of reaction, for a reaction. So let's understand what, if you ever see the word formation, what it means in chemistry. So if one mole of a compound is formed from its constituent elements, in their natural elemental forms, then we call the delta H for that reaction the enthalpy of formation or the heat of formation. And we give it a delta H with a little subscript of F. That's what that F stands for, formation. So for example, if I was to write the reaction that goes with showing the heat of formation for CO2, okay, um, notice what it would look like. So I would want to form just one mole of CO2. So I would want my coefficient of CO2 um, to be 1, and I put CO2 gas as my only product. So then I need to make this product from its constituent elements, how they are found in nature, um, typically at standard conditions. Um, so carbon would be found as a solid, and carbon does have a couple of different allotropes that we call them, um, but the most stable form of carbon is actually graphite. Um, so if you have to specify what type of carbon, you would put graphite. Um, oxygen is, for, is found as O2 gas, right? It's found as diatomic oxygen, so don't forget Hofbrinkle, your diatomic elements, that's how they're found stably in nature um, under ordinary conditions, and it's found as a gas. So you are indicating um, the forms that they're found in, and you're indicating the correct phase. So I would need one carbon to form CO2 and one O2 to form one CO2. And then the delta H that I write for this reaction, I can actually give it a subscript of F because this is a heat of formation reaction. Okay, so again, notice that I am only creating one mole of product. If I was doing the formation reaction for, let's say, KCl, I would want to form just one mole of KCl. It's an ionic compound, so it would be a solid form. And what elements would make this up? So I would need, potassium is just found as K. It's not one of my diatomic elements. For metals, we will just write the symbol K, and it's a solid. Remember that your metals are solid at room temperature, except for mercury. And chlorine is found as diatomic chlorine, and it's a gas. So I have to write Cl2, but notice that to balance this, there's only one Cl in this formula, I would need half Cl2. Now normally when we write balanced reactions, we want the smallest whole number integers, but this is an exception when you're writing a formation reaction. Since you want to make sure you're only showing one mole of product, it's okay if you have fractions as your coefficients. It's encouraged to have fractions as your coefficients. Okay, um, And here would be my delta H for this reaction, and now I can give it a subscript of F because this is a formation reaction. Remember that, so I asked here, if chlorine was a liquid, would delta H be different? Yes, your delta H does depend on the phases, so that's why you want to pick the phase that it's naturally formed in, um, in nature under room conditions. Okay, so let's practice writing formation reactions because sometimes they ask us to write one in a free response and we should just also develop our understanding of what it means to have a formation reaction. So take a moment and write the formation reactions for A, B, C, and D. Pause the video and then check your work. Okay, so for CH4, I want to make sure I have one mole of CH4 on the right. Okay, and I would need carbon. You could put an S here if you want comma graphite or just carbon graphite. If you just put carbon solid, I would probably give you credit for that. Um, but if you have to indicate which one, you pick graphite over, over diamond. Um, and then I would need two H2s so that I have a balanced reaction just creating one mole of CH4. Remember, H2 is found as a gas um, and it's diatomic. And I just put delta HF and I, you can look up the date delta HF values in your an appendix in your textbook. And if you do, you'll find that this has a negative 74.8 kilojoules. Okay, um, so let's do MgO. So I want one mole of MgO. It's a solid since it's ionic compound. And the reactants should be one Mg, which is a solid, and half an O2 gas. Okay, it's okay that you have a fraction because I, I want to balance my oxygen to have one atom on the left and one on the right. And if you were to look up the MgO uh, heat of formation in an appendix, you'll see it's negative 601.7. 
And CO, again, carbon graphite plus a half O2 gives me one CO. And here is ammonia. I want NH3 on the right, just one mole of it. Nitrogen is found as N2 gas, okay? So um, I want half of that so that I balance the N, one and one. And then how do I balance the hydrogen? Okay, hydrogen is found as H2 gas. I would need three halves. So that when I multiply three halves by two, the twos cancel and I get three hydrogens and three hydrogens, okay? Um, so again, notice I do have fractions and that's okay because I wanna specifically, specifically create one mole of product. You have to remember that if you see a formation reaction, you are creating one mole of product from its constituent elements as they are found in standard conditions at room temperature. Take a moment, look at this problem. It requires kind of dealing with Hess's law as well. Uh, take a moment, try it, and then we'll check your work. So calculate the enthalpy of formation, that's what that little F means, of ethyl alcohol from the following heats of combustion. Okay, and if you're wondering what this little degree sign, we'll talk about it in a moment. It means under standard conditions. So it's really important for this problem, which is an AP problem, actually an AP multiple choice, um, to remember what it means to have a formation reaction because that's your target equation to get the delta H of this formation reaction. So if I were to write out the heat of form, the, react, the formation reaction that goes with this, I would be creating one mole of this ethyl alcohol. I would need two carbon solids, and they just write it as solid here, so I'm gonna write it as solid here. Um, one O, so I would write it as half an O2 gas form. And I would need six hydrogens. I'm gonna write that as three H2 gases to create this one mole. And um, I notice here that it's a liquid, so offhand you might not have known that, but I put in liquid phase. Now, I have these three steps. I don't actually have this reaction. So I need to figure out how I can manipulate these three steps so that they add up to this target equation. So that's a Hess's law problem. If you need help with that, go back to the Hess's law video. So I'm just gonna go one by one, 2C car, uh, 2C, okay, here's C solid. It's on the correct side, it's on the left side, but it doesn't have the correct coefficient. So I wanna multiply this whole equation, including delta H by two. Okay, half an O2, oh man, O2 is in a lot of things. So I'm gonna hope that works itself out and come back to that. Three H2, where do I find H2? Okay, that's in the second reaction. Is it on the correct side? Yes, it's on the reactant side, so I don't need to flip the reaction. If I did, I would just flip the sign of delta H, but I don't have to. And it does not have the correct coefficient. So this has a coefficient of three, so I wanna multiply this entire equation, including delta H by three. And then here, C2H5OH, it's not on the correct side. It's a product here, it's a reactant here, but it does have the correct coefficient. So all I wanna do is flip this reaction and therefore flip the sign of delta H. And once I make those changes, they should all hopefully add up to my target equation and I can add the delta H's. So here's those changes carry through and here are my delta H's carry through. I'm multiplying the first by two, the second by three, and then last one I'm just flipping the sign. And now I can add up all my delta H's because what I'll notice is now all the reactions do add up to my target equation and the O2s do take care of themselves, okay? Um, and here's my delta H, negative 278, which is choice C. So notice that you do need to know the terminology formation because sometimes that's what you're asked for and you need to know, oh, I need to be able to write a formation reaction. Okay, so I just said, okay, you see this little degree sign? What does that mean? You even see it over here. Okay, this degree sign means standard state or standard conditions. It's a little different than STP. It's one atmosphere, which is standard pressure, but it's at 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin. It's basically the conditions that you find room temperature or that you carry out most reactions at, which is at room temperature and standard pressure. If you see something in aqueous, standard state refers to having one molar solution or a molarity of one molar. Okay, um, so you should know what that degree sign means. You should know the conditions that go along with it. So a lot of the times the delta H's that you see tabulated will have that little degree sign because it's the enthalpy that's measured at standard state. One atmosphere, 25 degrees Celsius, and if you have any aqueous uh, solutions, they're one molar solutions. 
Um, so that's why I said it's important, as we were writing those formation reactions before, you need to know how substances exist under standard state, the phase, and the formula. So for instance, your diatomic elements, okay, and you need to know some of your phases. So H2 is a gas, CO2, oh, we're going across, <laughs> water is a liquid, Cl2 is a gas, CO2, gas, sodium, your metals, solids, except mercury. Bromine, liquid, you should know your halogens. Fluorine and chlorine are gases, bromine's a liquid, but iodine's a solid. But they're all diatomic for those uh, halogens. Okay, so a lot of times you'll see delta HF values written with that degree sign. So again, it's just when one mole of the compound's made from its elements, but it's all recorded at standard state. Okay, um, so same thing that we've been doing before, but the conditions are standard state. One mole of product being made, the most stable forms of each element are chosen. Now, if there's more than one state for a substance under standard conditions, the more stable one is used. As I said, we're dealing with graphite over carbon or the buckyball um, form of carbon because it's more stable. By definition, why are we doing this? Why are we writing these formation reactions with their elements in their most stable form? Because elements in their most stable form at standard state have an enthalpy of formation of zero. It takes no energy to form them and that's why they are found that way under standard conditions. Um, so you need to remember sometimes they don't have heats of formation for elements at their standard state written and that's because it's zero. Okay, There's no formation reaction needed when the element is already present in its standard state. So all of those reactants that we're writing in our formation reaction the heats of formation of those things are zero. So if you see them in a reaction and you need to know its formation, uh, its delta H of formation, it's zero. Otherwise, you can look up all the other, uh, all other compounds or even other forms of the element um, and you can find delta H, uh, F's heats of formation for them. Okay, notice a lot of them are negative, but some are positive, so some are endothermic and some are exothermic. How can we use this to calculate the delta H of any reaction? So we can break down any reaction into formation reactions and use Hess's law in this kind of way. So basically, this is something that is on your formula sheet, okay, except it's a little bit different on your formula sheet. I put N's and M's in here. So basically what you're doing, this means sum, all right? So what you're doing is you are adding up the sum of all the delta HFs for your products and you're multiplying them by the coefficient in the reaction, and then you're subtracting the sum of the delta H's of the reactants, but you're also multiplying them by the coefficient in the reaction. Notice this is on your formula sheet, but the N and the M are missing. It's not reminding you to multiply by the coefficient in the reaction. So what they can do is they can give you a reaction. They can give you tabulated delta HFs, and you can calculate the delta H for the overall reaction. So I want you to take a moment and try this. Um, all the delta HFs you need are on this page, so I'll put it, I'll put it up so you can see it a little bit better. Um, take a moment and try it. You're just doing the products times their coefficient minus the reactants times their coefficient. Okay, let's go over this together. So again, products times their coefficients, the sum of them, minus the reactants times their coefficient. Now what you might notice is you can find C3H8, CO2, and H2O on that chart. Okay, sometimes you need to make sure you get the correct phase. So like H2O um, has liquid and gas, so just make sure you're looking up the correct phase for the reaction that's given. But you do not see O2 gas anywhere. Well, why is that? What did I say the heat of formation of an element in its standard state is in its stable form? Zero. So that's why it's not listed. And if it's on an AP exam, all the values you need will be there, but sometimes the elements are missing, and that's why. So I am just doing three times that of CO2 plus four times that of H2O liquid. Okay, that's my products. Minus the sum of the reactants, 1 times the, co times the heat of formation of C3H8, plus 5 times 0. You need to remember that pure elements in their standard state, how they are naturally found in nature, it takes no energy to form them. So it's 0. They're already like that. They're already there. And 
if I carry this out, I'll see that the delta H overall is negative, about negative 2220 kilojoules. Okay, um, combustion reactions are typically exothermic. They release a lot of energy, and that's why they can be used to power cars and things like that. Okay, question, oh, I guess I can't answer any questions. <laughs> Take a moment and try this next one, and this one, everything you need is in the problem statement. Okay, so here, again, this is just another way to find delta H if you have heats of formations of the reactants and products in the reaction that you want. So you're just doing the sum of the products minus the sum of the reactants, making sure to remember to multiply by the coefficient, and making sure to remember if you have an element in, in its standard state, in its standard form, the heat of formation is zero. So all I'm doing is two times that of KClO3 minus two times the heat of formation of KCl plus three times O2s, but that's zero. That's why it's not given in the problem statement. And if I carry that out, I'll see that I get positive 90 kilojoules. This is an endothermic reaction. Okay. Mo no, here's an, um, a note that most of the problems you will see on AP free response will give you the enthalpy of the reaction or maybe you solved for the enthalpy of the reaction, the delta H overall um, in, a pre in a previous part, and then they ask you to calculate a missing enthalpy of formation. So like here's that same problem but different information and, and asked for something different. So here's the overall reaction and here's the overall delta H. I give you the heat of formation of KCl, but I want the heat of formation of KClO3. So read the problem carefully and see what they're giving you and what they're asking for. Because in this case, I'm, I'm asking you for the heat of formation of KClO3. So I can still use that same equation, products minus reactants equaling to the overall delta H. But in this case, I give you the delta H or maybe it's a free response and you solved for it in a previous part. And I am missing this heat of formation of KClO3, okay, but I give you that of KCl. So when I solve through, don't forget to keep the coefficient, okay? If you, if you don't like writing it as delta HF of KClO3, make 2x, because you guys like to solve for x, make it an x, okay? And then you'll find that the heat of formation of KClO3 is negative three nine.